Hello friends, uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, cloud computing. In the last lecture we study that why we should learn cloud computing. So similarly it is very essential to understand what is cloud computing before we log into AWS or Azure. So it is, uh, it would be very helpful or for you to deploy the infrastructure onto Azure once you understand or I have a solid understanding that okay what actually the cloud computing is. I forget about Azure or AWS for a time, just try to grasp the concept of cloud computing. So we'll start by the definition first. So there are a number of definitions if you'll search onto the internet which are trying to define the uh, cloud computing. So there are many definitions today which attempt to address cloud platform from the perspective of academics, architects, engineers, or you could say providers or consumers. But there should be one single definition which, which defines the cloud computing. We can say that, okay, this is it. Now I understand the cloud computing. So, you know, for a decade almost the research was going on and uh, it was very difficult for the, uh, one for the organizations to define the cloud computing that actually what cloud is. So uh, I would say the NIST after a very long research they provided a definition this long definition. So don't worry about this uh, long definition. So just uh, we'll go through it once only and uh, once we study all the different characteristics and all those things, then again we'll come to this definition and it would be very easy for you, believe me in that. So for this uh, slide, so that uh, you should know that, okay, NIST created this definition and for us to move on to the next slide, uh, wherein we study that, okay, how this long definition came into the picture. So it is, uh, it would be good if you can just go through it once uh, with me. Cloud computing, you can say, is a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources like network, server, storage, application, and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort of service provider interaction. This model is composed of five essential characteristics, three service model, and three deployment models. So we'll probably see what are the service models, deployment models in this uh, lecture only. So let's study that, okay, how this definition came into picture, what kind of research was going on. So really before NIST, there was no clear definition about 2007, 8, there was no clear definition and uh, organizations were working or trying to understand that, okay, what does cloud computing is because there were small vendors there in the market and they were trying to capture market and even customers were trying to reap the benefits of cloud. So there was one definition in fact which was created by NST but it was still in draft till 2009. So you know before NIST the, the scenario was totally different. Let me share your story. Before NIST there were small vendors within the market. They were trying to capture the market. Even customers they were trying to use the services of the cloud provider and uh, they were th thinking that okay they can deploy their infra quickly and they can start running the business but the kind of benefits customers were looking for in case of service providers they were not getting that and even it was not clear for the service providers as well that okay what kind of services they should provide what kind of baselines they should have even they were not having the clear idea because different kind of enterprises they were coming and trying to load their in front to the cloud even for the cloud users similarly they were not having set baseline in front of them that okay i want to use aws cloud or azure cloud or let's say uh, oracle cloud right so in that case what should i look for how do i compare what should i look for will my infra will be good so we'll be able to uh, deploy quickly so it should not be like uh, you know if netflix and uh, you can say that uh, you know one other uh, online streaming organization is there so netflix is charged for the other organization and the other organization charged for the uh, netflix so there should be a transparency in the billing so all those things uh, as an organizations they were looking before moving on to the cloud so there, there was a lack of clear baseline for the customers as well so you can see before nist came into picture or they provided the definition which we have seen in the last slide so in that case for the cloud vendors uh, you can say the less trust was there they were not getting not able to attract a good amount of customers customers were reluctant to use the uh, cloud service because no baseline was there even they were thinking that okay 
how they'll be charged for different services for the cloud service provider they were having very less use case because if the customers would not be coming how you'll be having use cases or case studies to to represent it to the next customers so enterprises they were not very satisfied because the contracts were not clear when they were trying to use the cloud services more expenditure you can say no clear guidelines no stringent slas or variation in the contracts no baselines were there right so when nist came into the picture and they provided those baselines or those five characteristics so they provided actually five characteristics to make this bond uh, better so nist said that okay if you are a cloud service provider just look on these five characteristics if you can provide more than five it would be very good but if you'll pay concentration on those five characteristics and we'll come to those five characteristics in the next slide you'll have a good business you'll have an increased trust more business customers would be ready to experiment and you'll be having a huge case repository right you'll be able to earn much more than you think if you'll th provide these five characteristics or if uh, to your customers right so as a cloud service provider they got that okay i'll if we'll work on these five characteristics we'll have resource pooling and broad network access and all those things then you know we can provide a good service to our customers and earn good amount of money see from a service provider any service provider their main aim is customer satisfaction and the second is uh, money which is the byproduct right so similarly they got the clue that okay we'll be able to provide good services by adopting these five characteristics which nist provided and will have a happy customers so for customers you know what is the main or for the enterprises what is main goal that they should be able to save money have a good business right they should have a internal happy customers and at at the top level c level they should be able to save money while deploying the in front to the cloud so that motto was was you can say solved after nist came into the picture earlier they were all struggling and cloud vendors were not getting that kind of business users were not getting that kind of services so after nist you can say the satisfied customers were there less expenditure they were having a transparency in the billing so one organization is not being charged for the other so clear contracts and clear baselines for the enterprises so just remember what we studied that okay for both to uh, to check or the baseline was to check for those five characteristics don't worry we'll dig into those five characteristics one by one so that you can have a solid understanding of cloud computing so this is the definition uh, you can see a definition or a note which was provided by the scientist of nist so by default if you're not aware about nist if you're not from a security background nist is a you know national institutes of standard and technology which works worldwide is a body which works on the standardization of things right so you know they prepared a standard you can say for for cloud computing as well so just go into the internet and study what is nist national institutes of standard and technology so they have developed various standards related to various technologies related to the application security and all those things so nist scientists say that now they have a tool to determine like i said extent to which the information implementation technologies they are considering to meet the cloud characteristics and models this is very important because by adopting an authentic cloud which will be providing those five characteristics they are more likely to reap the benefits of cloud right i said that if, if they are having those five characteristics they can have cost saving energy savings rapid deployment and customer employment so that was the thing like a, a kind of a tool was being provided by the nist for the customers as well as for the service providers so let's move on to the next slide so what comprises of uh, this cloud computing right so like I said the those five characteristics service models and deployment models so what are those five uh, essential characteristics which csp is cloud service provider like aws azure or gcp they need to have in their infra like on demand self service broad network access resource pooling rapid elasticity and measured service so you can check for the uh, utility like models uh, onto the internet also that okay what exactly it is but these are the five essential characteristics still measured service similarly if you are in a cloud customer you need to look for these five characteristics still measured service 
uh, when you are looking or choosing for the uh, cloud provider or a cloud vendor you can check that okay whether it provides on-demand self-service broad network access resource pooling rapid elasticity or a med service so this is the baseline which you need to look for and you'll be able to run your business in a good way similarly these are the different service model whether you want to use infrastructure as a service or platform as a service like you need a you know vm from a scratch and then you want to deploy an infrastructure platform you may be requiring a database and software as a service like uh, you are having hr applications and the boxes there right dropbox is there so office 365 so different things are there depending on the service you want to choose so there are different models right and different models will be having different responsibilities so similarly deployment model whether you want to use only your private cloud and uh, or a public cloud or a hybrid cloud you want to use both the public cloud and a private cloud so this is the main thing which is being used by the organization for the large enterprise if you're a small organization they are uh, good to go with the uh, public cloud so we'll come to this uh, in uh, in different lecture in detail as well so this is it friend uh, uh, in this lecture i hope uh, you you really enjoyed this lecture so thank you friends thank you for watching hello friends in this lecture, we'll study the first characteristics of cloud computing, which is on-demand self-service. So this is the first characteristics out of those five characteristics, which we, uh, which we had seen in the previous lecture. So let's see what is on-demand self-service. So on-demand self-service, if you'll just pay attention to the name, it is on-demand self-service, a kind of a service which you can you know provision yourself so whenever there is a requirement whenever there is a demand so you can provision that particular service you know with yourself without uh, anybody's interaction so what does on-demand self-service says and this definition is again provided by the NIST because if you remember this is one of the five essential characteristics and these characteristics were given by NIST right and this definition is also given by NIST which says on-demand self-service is a feature right allowing cloud computing users to manage their own virtual resources without interaction with the service provider so let's say for an example it is 3 a.m in the midnight and i am working for an organization and i need a 500 gb of storage right so in that case I should not be calling the service provider like AWS or Microsoft Azure to boss just provide me this 500 GB of uh, hard disk drive right so on demand self services whatever your requirement is as per you know different customers they are having a different requirement you should be able to get those service without the interaction of a service provider right i can log into the aws console or azure console i should be able to get those services so let's see with the help of an example so if you'll see uh, this company a then company b company c and company d right so each organization has a different kind of business right so organization a might be having a different kind of a business they need more of computing resources or some messaging needs are there right similarly company c and company c users they need application services only and company d they need platform services or or storage services only so you know from this point you can just imagine that there are n number of organizations right fortune 500 companies and all these organizations are there so each and organizations they are running different kind of business some are service based industries some are engineering organizations right so some are doing research some are stock based companies stock uh, market organizations some are stock brokers so each and every organization they are having a different application needs and they need a different kind of infra so they are having a different needs so depending on your need depending on your demand right whatever kind of resources you need you should be able to get that so this is the first characteristics which you should look for when you are choosing a service provider that okay is there a provision that okay if i can go ahead and get those resources which i need at any point of time so let's say if company a they say that okay give me 10 virtual machines so i should be able to get that 
by doing self service or with the help of few clicks from the service provider i should not be calling or sending an email to service provider to give me 10 virtual machines right so similar way let's say if there is another need wherein says that give me 500 gb of hard disk or give me two terabyte of uh, hard disk drive so in that case i should be able to get those details or those services from the service provider without any kind of interruption now guys remember this thing that on-demand self-service characteristics just think from both ways if you are a cloud customer or a user of cloud services how easy it would be to just log into the cloud console and get this 500 GB of storage or 10 virtual machines at the same time because in that case you'll not be uh, waiting for someone to provision the resources for you you have just provisioned the virtual machine hard disk drive and you're you can install the application and run your business with no time now think from a csp point of view like in the last lecture we studied that okay we need to study these five characteristics from both the standpoint of only then we'll have a solid understanding of cloud computing so let's say if you're a service provider and you are running different uh, uh, different kind of uh, customers are using your cloud infra so in that case you you have automated the things in such a way that you are not responding to each and every request you have automated the task that within the few clicks they should be able to get those resources and in that case customers they'll have a, a great uh, faith on you so that you know they can uh, recommend the same to the other customers so this is the best example of uh, on-demand self-service other example uh, you know apart from the cloud if i'll say like on-demand self-services it is in the similar way like you log into the uh, amazon cloud and provision the resources like you go into the amazon website and order your favorite books or your favorite shoes like it is an on-demand self-service whenever you need a book you log into the amazon console or amazon portal and you order your book so this is a self-service again that uh, the example we are discussing is in the form of cloud services so it is the same thing so whenever there is a need i can uh, you know just log in and i can uh, you know order for those services so this is it in the first lecture uh, which is about on-demand self-service so first characteristics hope you have enjoyed the lecture so thank you guys thank you for watching meet you in the next lecture hello friends so welcome to this lab in this lab we'll see how to use this characteristics or how cloud providers are providing this particular service and how it is beneficial to customers like we discussed in details so just to recap in the previous lecture we have already discussed that okay on demand self services like it allows the users to basically manage the services whenever they need or whenever they want to provision the services without the uh, without to notify or without the permission of the or without interaction with the service provider so in our case service provider is microsoft azure so we'll see how we can use the service at any point of time when we actually need it so let's go to microsoft azure portal and so portal.azure.com so we'll click over here and if you'll see once we log in into the service i'm just logged in and now let's say there are different resources within the azure cloud and you can see the resources we have so let's say if i'll click on all services there are different services like uh, compute if you'll see the virtual machines the virtual machine scale set like your containers we have or oh, virtual machine skill set like your load balancers and then you have your function app container instances batch account so there are number of services like disks images all those things similarly if i'll come to networking i can have the public ip addresses vnets express route to just have the on-premise connectivity vnet load balancers virtual network gateways right similarly if i'll come to containers i can have all these services similarly storage ai machine learning internet of things so as a customer the how this on-demand feature is useful let's say at any point of time i need to provision one 
server on which I want to deploy the application. So I can just go ahead and click on compute and click on virtual machines. Once I'll click on that and create a virtual machine. So here the type of virtual machine I want to run. Let's say the type of uh, application I'm having. So just specify the resource group and you can say machine demo VM. Okay. And this is the region at a higher level that okay in which physical location you want to deploy your resource so we'll discuss that in the upcoming lectures what are regions and availability zones okay so where you want to run your business so within the uh, particular region you are having the availability zone right and these are the availability zones which you can select one two three where you actually want to deploy your virtual machine so for this purpose of demo, I don't need any kind of redundancy. So I'm just trying to show you or correlate that, okay, how on-demand self-services beneficial to the customers that, okay, they want to provision something, they can go ahead. Similarly, like I want to use Windows 2019 data center 16, or let's say I want to use Windows 2012. I can, you know, have the uh, uh, name of that particular virtual machine like demo user and then you can set the password okay and similarly here as well i can go ahead and i can set the password and there i you know i need to allow the 3389 port to uh, connect this machine then you know which kind of disk you want to allow premium disk standard disk all these options as a customer i can choose and similarly as a csp when you are able to provide you will be able to attract more customers like we discussed in the theory part so similarly in the networking uh, in which virtual network i want to play subnet so all these things are in the customer hand and are available in the uh, you know with with few clicks or you know pretty quick manner so if i'll click on tags and click on review and create i'll be able to create this virtual machine so similarly i can create as many as virtual machines as i want so let's say if you want i can click on virtual machines again and i can deploy you know as many as machines i want so this is the beauty that okay you can deploy the infrastructures on your own need and at any point of time without interaction with the service provider so i am not doing any interaction with the service provider now as of now i have the login credentials i can go ahead and the provision the services similarly i can deploy applications i can deploy sql server over here i can deploy cosmos db i can have storage network networks so there are number of services which i can use or this is how uh, easy it would be for the customer when you provide or when this on-demand characteristics is there now hope you have the much more clarity on to the on-demand concept which is the first characteristics so thank you friends uh, thank you for watching this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hello friends uh, welcome to this lecture on broad network access so this is the second characteristics of uh, out of the five those essential characteristics which we studied so in the first lecture, we, we studied about the on-demand self-service. So in this lecture, we'll come to the, uh, we are coming to the second characteristics, which is broad network access. So let's study with the help of example that, okay, what does it actually mean and how it benefits both the cloud service provider and customers. So what is broad network access? So again, this definition is provided by the NIST and in very simple terms, which is easy to understand. So what does it say is that capabilities are available over the network and access through standard mechanisms that promote use by heterogeneous thin or uh, thick client platforms, example, mobile phones, tablets, laptops, right? So in that case, you know it should provide a broad network access what does it actually mean right so see uh, <clears throat> whether you are using the aws azure or whatever type of uh, cloud service or vendor right so nist says as per this characteristics 
the cloud platform whether it is AWS Azure or cloud vendors platform should be accessible over the different platforms it should not be limited to the uh, to the common devices such as uh, you know laptops or workstations but this also includes your mobile phones right which we are using these days your smartphones thin clients and so on so whatever the cloud platform is so it should be accessible through the different platforms through the mobile also you should be able to manage your cloud platform similar way we, we are able to manage the uh, our platform uh, in case of traditional IT as well we are able to manage our uh, our infrastructure with the help of a laptop or a workstation you just need to log into the uh, your VPN or to the uh, what do you say are uh, this uh, your Zen desktop and you, you are entering into the uh, corporate network where you can uh, manage your infra so in the similar way NIST says that you should look for broad network access that whether the vendor has different types of uh, access which they provide so that you can manage your infra through the different devices which are available apart from the traditional resources like laptops and a workstation so just imagine these days that okay if you are a cloud engineer or a cloud architect and you are just spending your holiday and you are just enjoying at the beach at the same time you got a request that okay there is some critical thing which you need to manage you can just open up your smartphone and you can log into your Amazon console and or to the cloud console and you can manage your infra from there so really to provide all these uh, things cloud vendors are also working very hard uh, or they are providing all these characteristics to the different customers so again remember that okay we need to remember these characteristics from both sides uh, because if as a customer I am having the different options available with me to access my cloud resources it is always better for me that okay whichever devices I am having handy at with me, available with me at any point of time I should be able to manage my infrastructure like mobile phones laptops and workstations so think from the case of service providers as well so in case of service providers the more uh, devices or the more uh, you can say the type of network or mechanisms you provide to the customers so that they can manage the infra you'll be having a variety of customers uh, who are not restricted to laptops or workstations to come to you to get the services in that case the more mechanisms you have you'll get more customers and more money in return so from both ways we need to look that okay how broad network access is helpful for the cloud service providers and the customers so let's say if you want to uh, just for your uh, help or uh, for you to understand better so let's say if you have an Amazon account or an Azure client just go into the Google store right so you'll see that onto the Google store uh, you'll find this AWS console this is an app you can open it up and with the same email ID you can just open this app and you'll be able to manage your uh, uh, Amazon cloud with the help of this particular app and most of the services so similarly uh, this uh, Azure Microsoft Azure is also having apps similarly Alibaba cloud or a Google cloud they're also having their apps through which you can log in and manage your infra so in this way all the service providers they are providing what they are doing is they are providing by providing all these mechanisms like providing those apps and all those services they are providing a broad network access means it they should provide various mechanisms to to the customers so they can so they can then get the flexibility to log in and manage their cloud infra so this is about the second characteristics so this is it my dear friends in this lecture so thank you thank you for watching this lecture we'll meet you in the next lecture hello friends so welcome to this lecture on broad network access so remember in the theory lecture we discussed that okay the second characteristics is like capabilities should be provided over the network and there could be number of ways like it should be accessible from the laptop workstation or mobile phones or tablets right so that is how we will be able to get this second characteristics 
broad network access so really how it is possible okay so how you can do that let's say you know this is portal.azio.com if your laptop is having the Wi-Fi or internet connectivity you can access this portal maybe it is a workstation or it is a desktop provided once you have the internet connectivity once you click on it you will be able to see the console and from here you can manage your infra so this is restricted to your PC and or you can say your laptop or a desktop but what about if you are having some kind of mobile or tablet from where you want to operate you are having an ipad or an android phone for that also it is pretty simple if you want to check uh, let me open google.com and let's say uh, you can type azure on android okay and you can see that okay if i'll click on play store i have this microsoft azure app which i can install and you can see that all the services i'll be able to see like if i'll open up this is your app services virtual machines web apps so from here also i can see all the resources manage the resources so for example i am sitting on a beach you are a as your administrator and you want to deploy then at the beach i'm having the internet connectivity with my mobile i'm having this uh, app installed i'll be able to manage that similarly uh, let's say if I'll go back and Azure on let's say if I'll type in Azure on iOS and similarly uh, I can go to the Apple Store and you can see I have having a app for my iOS device as well and I'll be able to manage the uh, you know infrastructure through the app as well so you can see the similar screenshots and you know this is the metrics and uh, there are you know like you'll be able to see the infra which you are managing with your credentials so this is the beauty of broad network access and how microsoft is providing this apps uh, onto the android and to the google platform and similarly via portal you can access and manage your cloud so hope now friends you are having the clarity onto the broad network access so this is it friends in this lecture thank you for watching this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you friends welcome to this lecture on resource pooling so resource pooling is the third characteristics of uh, out of the five essential characteristics of cloud computing the first was uh, on-demand self-service the second one uh, which we had was broad network access and this is the third one which is resource pooling so let's get into the details that okay what does it actually mean and how it will be beneficial for the cloud service providers as well for the cloud customers so again this definition this explanation we have taken it from the NIST so as per which what does it says is the providers providers is cloud service provider or a cloud vendor we are talking about providers computing resources are pooled to serve multiple consumers using a multi-tenant model with I'll, I'll come to this point later on with a different physical and virtual resources dynamically assigned and reassigned according to the consumer demand so let's pay attention over here which says that because in case of cloud vendors there would be number of customers and they will be having different kind of demands so in order to serve those kind of demands the cloud providers they should have a pool of number of resources right number of resources in terms to support multi multi consumers or multi customers so in a way the line which i have underlined multi tenant model is like in the same hardware or maybe let's say on the same uh, server they are having multiple vms running and those vms might be running for different customers let's say if a server is having 10 vms there could be a possibility that those 10 vms are being used by the five different organizations so they should be able to serve multiple customers using the multi-tenant environment with the different physical and virtual resources and the consumer can assign and reassign the resources as per their need so and there is one other thing which we need to understand in case of resource pooling is there is a sense of location independence in that the customer generally has no control or knowledge over the exact location of the 
provided resources but may be able to specify location at a higher level of abstraction example country state or data center let me give you an example if you are from a security background right and trying to understand this cloud so in that case there might be a regulatory requirement or a compliance requirement which says there's it an organization should be aware about that okay where their data is lying means at a state or a country or at a higher level they should be knowing about that so just to help that in case of resource pooling since number of data centers in a particular region might be connected with each other so customers should be able to get the idea that okay where i am placing my data so in case of cloud vendors they're having different regions like uh, singapore north virginia ireland all those things are there so let's say if my compliance requirement says that my data should not go out of india or sh out of uh, let's say us so i should be able to keep my data in that particular area only or in that particular state only so customer should be able to get that particular information that okay from a country or from a state perspective where their data is lying so again this is again a, a different type of compliance requirement maybe depending on the organization or the business you are running and again on those business there could be different compliance requirements uh, like hipaa is there gxp is there and then you know pci dss for uh, uh, payment card industries and uh, hipaa is for the medical so depending on the different uh, compliance requirement uh, this is this is applicable so example of resources what we are talking about is storage processing memory or network so what does resource pooling actually means so in 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 simple sense means let's say if you are looking for a cloud vendor means this is let's say if this is a cloud vendor aws azure or google so they should be having a resource pooling or the integration of all these things in a such a way that they can have a unlimited number of resources within this pool so that any customer with a different need or with a huge demand you should be able to serve those customers so in that case as in cloud vendor you should have a pool of resources means let's say if at any point of time i need uh, two terabyte of ram and i need it immediately or within next one hour the cloud provider should be able to provide to the customers they should not say that okay they don't have that particular capacity right so in that case the kind of resource pooling the integration of things and the available resources should be available at all the times within the cloud service providers to serve the customers so just think from a cloud uh, customer that okay whatever resources you need depending on uh, depending on your need they should have a such a huge pool that you can uh, you can pull out the chunk as per your requirement and then uh, once your requirement is finished you can again pull those things into uh, put those things into that particular pool so from a cloud perspective again we'll think from a both perspective cloud customer uh, cloud service provider perspective and cloud customer perspective so let's say if you are a cloud customer and you are using this cloud service providers in that case there are a number of resources which are available to you and those are provided by the cloud service provider and you can choose those services to run your business in that case you are a happy customer and again your internal customers would be happy and you are uh, running your business pretty smoothly whenever there is a spike you can get the resources and all those things similarly for a cloud service provider if you are able to satisfy and have a pool of such a huge number of resources and you are able to satisfy the need of different organizations with the different business models and different uh, type of uh, uh, business they are having in that case they are having more trust in you and you'll be able to earn a good amount of money so this is a win win situation again for both the resources so when we say that okay there are different uh, resource pooling resources so what resource actually we need if you'll think from in that perspective in case if i want to move on to the cloud what resources i need i need compute resources right i may be require networks number of nic cards or a particular level of bandwidth is required maybe a storage pool is required i need a certain amount of hard disk hard disk drive to to save my data or to you know apply logic onto the data so depending on my need the 
pool of resources the tight integration should be there within the cloud provider to serve the customers in a better way so this is about the resource pooling which is the third essential characteristics which NIST says that you should look for while choosing the cloud customer so now just think from that perspective that how how good baselines are being provided by the NIST to the customers when they are looking for or to when they are looking to provision the cloud services so thank you thank you friends thank you for watching this uh, lecture hope you have really enjoyed this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hello friends so welcome to this demo on resource pooling so just a recap in the theory lecture we have discussed that in case of third characteristics the CSPs should have pool of resources in terms of your compute storage RAM really to provide services to different type of customers depending on their business and at a higher level it should be able to support multi tenant means number of customers like it could be you know your bank and then you know just for example let's say adobe is using the cloud at the same time british petroleum is using the azure cloud there are different customers that might be using the cloud so in that case it should be able to support multi-tenant environment and that is like you know and one should not be able to see the other resources from a security perspective as well and there is a sense of location independence at a higher level customers should be able to see like the country and all those things where they are provisioning their resources so we'll see when we say pool of resources how it is uh, how it is provided in case of azure means n number of resources there should be huge pool of resources and to serve the multiple customer needs so we'll see that in a moment so let's say if i'll go to azure portal and just think from a number of organizations so let's say if i am a single organization and i need a number of virtual machines so i can go ahead over virtual machines and i can provision the virtual machine now when i'm provisioning the virtual machines it is giving me the capability that okay depending on my business the type of virtual machine i want to use i can use that for example if we say that uh, demo machine just give it a name and see first of all when i'm creating this virtual machine this is my infra and i have this login portal.azure.com so all these infra this is visible to me only so any other organization or any other customer will not be able to see so similarly other customers will be able log in to portal.azure.com with their enterprise account with their login and they'll be logged into this their subscription or their uh, you can say their active directory and they they are provisioning the resources over in the microsoft azure so in that way when i'm logging every customer is using this portal.azure.com or the app and they are using their own credentials which are associated with them and they are provisioning their resources so in this way this third characteristics they are able to provide like they are supporting the multiple customers multiple tenants can use the uh, use the services so let's say if i am provisioning this virtual machine no one will be able to see this virtual machine till the point my credentials are secure so this is how they, they are able to support the multi-tenant environment and when we say pool of resources so just let's say if i'm provisioning this virtual machine see from a region specific in the characteristics we discussed that okay there is a sense of location independence in that customer generally has no control see at a higher level it should not be having the exact location let's say within poland or within india maybe the data center is in mumbai or some uh, location in delhi noida but at the same time it is uh, you know that that particular information exact location is not uh, available to the customer but at a higher level like country state and all those things should be provided so you can see from this location i have seen that okay asia pacific central india similarly japan east korea central at a higher level customers should get the knowledge that okay where there are deploy their resources because there are certain regulations uh, which demand that okay customers should be able to deploy the resources within a certain region or from certain regions the data should not go out from that perspective so let's say if i'll choose japan east from here 
uh, the third thing we were discussing is that you should have a pool of resources resource pooling so you can see the pool of resources like uh, the type of image i want a machine i want to build red ubuntu red hat suze centos right and then under each i am having the different capabilities let's say if i'll choose the size now there might be a requirement depending on the business i am running so for example you can see if i am having this b1 type of uh, virtual machine then i am giving you know 0.5 uh, gigabit of ram and then uh, you know the two disks and the iops i am getting right so similarly if i am going down then here you can see the number of vcpus or virtual cpus are getting increased ram is getting increased the number of disks are getting increased and here you know with the help of this i can really choose the type of virtual machine so you can see the pool of resources they are providing and this is very equal to number of customers and number of big enterprises they are using so they are having own credentials so they have these pool of resources within their data centers so that they can provide services to customers and i can provision my virtual machine so similarly you can use the type of generation you want to use small or let's say want to have medium or large scale so for example if i want to use the large virtual machines okay so in that case you know you can choose that okay whatever offering type you want to use the type of ram you want to have the number of vcpus you want to have uh, in terms of disk the kind of disk you are looking for so this is all the pool of resources they have bind together the csps like microsoft azure uh, here they have this pool of resources so that customer can provision different resources so similar this is one example of vm so similarly we can go ahead and provision the cosmos db over here uh, the configuration we want the sql databases we can provision you can have the storage account so that customer uh, can store different type of data like logs or archival storage depending on the cost and the need we can provision a storage account and start putting the data over here similarly i have the azure active directory and i can use this active directory to create user groups and then you know link my applications or users and assign them to different roles so that they can use or provision the resources so this is how they are providing pool of resources location independence and support to multi tenant environment so hope uh, now friends you have the clarity about the resource pooling characteristics so thank you friends uh, thank you for watching this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you friends welcome to this lecture on uh, rapid elasticity which is our fourth essential characteristics of uh, nist so we'll study into uh, dig deep dive into what is rapid elasticity and how it helps again uh, both service providers and the consumers So rapid elasticity, if I'll go by the definition of NIST, which says that capabilities or the features can be capabilities in terms of services can be elastically provisioned and released, or in some cases it should be automatically means whatever the services or we are looking for can be elastically provisioned. And in some cases it should be automatic without the intervention it means we can apply a some kind of logic wherein uh, the services should be uh, provisioned automatically with the help of a logic I'll give you an example over here to scale rapidly outward and inward depends on the demand of the customer to the consumers the capability available for provisioning often appear to be unlimited and can be appropriated in any quantity at any point of time see rapid elasticity is let's say if there is a huge spike coming in and in if i want to serve uh, the, my customers depending on the spike then i should be able to get those resources from the uh, from the cloud vendor just think for an example that okay big billion day sale is coming or then black friday is coming right so in all those cases what a decade back what amazon or organization used to do they used to provision huge infra at the back end to to really serve the kind of traffic they 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 imagined on that particular day so let's say if i know that okay tomorrow is a big billion day or a diwali sale as per indian festival or 
Diwali or Holi or a New Year or a Christmas sale is coming, right? So I can I can prospect that kind of traffic which would be coming to my websites. In that case, what I'll do is I generally the the vendors what they used to do they used to provision a huge amount of infra at the back ends. So let's say if there is a spike comes, they should be able to serve those customers and get get those particular uh, amount from the whatever the sales they would do, right? But in the past, we have seen, I'll also share one example with you that at number of point, the kind of traffic which uh, which was sent to those particular uh, giants was really huge that the kind of infra they prepared for themselves was not even sufficient. So in that case, what happened was they actually lost those particular customers and they lost that particular of uh, that particular sale on that day so it was a kind of a loss to the to the consumers but with the help of cloud computing and if you will look for this rapid elasticity feature within the cloud provider then in that case if there is a need to serve those customers or that particular spike cloud provider will be able to handle or will be able to provide the backend infra for you so let's say like i said uh, you know there is a normal business uh, bau or a business activities are running and you know that okay this will be the only kind of uh, servers or the infra which is required at the back end to serve the business then you can continue using that particular infra and you'll be charged for that now let's say you know that okay after 10 days some diwali sale or new year sale is coming so in that case you can provision the infra <coughs> or you can automatically set that particular workflow or a logic so let's say if uh, my CPU goes uh, more than 80% or 70%, then the automatically a server should be provisioned at the backend. So in that case, cloud services, they will be automatically able to provision a particular VM or a particular service for you with the help of the configuration which you have decided. So that whenever there is a spike or there is a load, so in that case, this, you should be able to get those particular customers or that particular sale. So, and in case, let's say after two days or after uh, New Year sale, you know, you really don't require that particular infra. So accordingly, you can deprovision that kind of so infra. So this is really a very solid characteristics of uh, a rapid elasticity. So you can just uh, you know imagine from an organization that the kind of infra they used to provision so huge amount of uh, you can say a capex was required to prepare to buy that infra then really uh, you know the kind of expenditure was there uh, to have those engineers in place and uh, to do that integration providing like the ip addresses firewalls and all those things creating vlans and putting those servers into those so that uh, the, a traffic could be uh, handled but let's say if you know the worst case scenario that the okay, traffic is more then apart from your whole arrangement the the customers or the you can say that organizations which run these kind of business they used to suffer but with the help of rapid elasticity this is uh, this is really helpful so you can say that uh, there are <coughs> uh, other things uh, which I say is, uh, you know, it is very critical to cost reduction in case of uh, in case of cloud vendors, right? So let's say if uh, if the infra really is not required, so you can just deprovision those those particular services or that particular infra. You'll not be charged for that. But in, let's say if it is the case with your typical traditional IT environment, then you have already paid in advance to procure that infra, right? But in case of cloud. So it is like it will automatically adjust if you have used for 10 hours, you'll be charged for 10 hours only. So similarly, like you have applied the logic to increase the infra, you can apply the logic to decrease the infra. Let's say if my CPU uh, percentage goes less than 20%, then decrease one server or decrease three servers. So I can apply all these logics within the uh, within the uh, uh, my cloud environment. So just think from the cloud consumer will again check for both the perspectives. If these kind of features are provided to you and the capacity is really unlimited, you'll be able to serve your customers without having the capital expenders in procuring that particular infra. And again, you'll be having happy customers and uh, all your needs are served. Similarly, if you are a cloud service provider, if your backend infra is so strong, 
in that case you a variety of giants can come to you and they can have their needs or um, to really serve their traffic so just think uh, that the customers like netflix uh, the kind of streaming application uh, the streaming company which provides a live streaming of data so all these organizations are using the cloud in front they are able to support their million customers with using different devices right so just think the power of a cloud uh, these days so you know the two factors like i said uh, one is critical to cost reduction and time to market means quickly you'll be able to provision the infra and you'll be able to uh, serve the needs um, as per the market demand so what is uh, okay so like i said i'll share you one uh, one story which uh, which will really help you to understand the feature of a rapid elasticity so i, I still remember at, uh, about two or three years back there was this uh, this uh, flipkart e-commerce giant their owners basically sent an apology email to the customers because there was they claimed that okay some big billion day sale uh, would be coming where they'll be offering huge uh, uh, discounts to the customer what happened was that day was that they provisioned the infra they they provisioned the infra to to meet the demands like they expected but the kind of traffic which uh, which came to their website was was really unexpected and the kind of infra they were having was not able to support those that kind of traffic and uh, there was a huge loss in sales and in customers so as a result they sent this particular email you can go through this that uh, we saw an unprecedented uh, interest in our products and traffic like never before we also realized that we were not adequately prepared for the sheer scale of the event so you can imagine that uh, I, I still remember the details of this email that okay they, they said that okay they they provisioned some 50 or uh, 5000 servers at the back end just to handle the spike but the spike which came was uh, was unbelievable and uh, they were not able to handle uh, that particular traffic so, so you can imagine that uh, you know the kind of loss uh, would have been to the organization on that particular day so after another two three years i i again heard the story that uh, really to reap these kind of benefits because they offer these kind of chains uh, uh, you know traffic uh, you know keep on increasing and the customer base is still increasing increasing so they flip cut actually moved to the uh microsoft cloud to really provide the services you can see that you know microsoft has just landed a big cloud deal by signing up india's largest e-commerce marketplace flipkart so they they took the decision that okay they'll be using the cloud services to to have the infra and provide services to the customer so just to share an example that uh, you know now they can use the rapid elasticity features of the cloud uh, wherein in such a huge demand in case if it comes microsoft azure would be able to provide that so this is it uh, in this lecture my dear friends hope you have really enjoyed this lecture thank you for watching meet you in the next lecture hello friends in this lecture we'll study the fifth and the last characteristics of uh, cloud computing which is measured service so we have uh, studied four characteristics till now so this is the last one and so what is measured service? So this is the important characteristics, last one, but not the least one. So measured service is pay as you go. So as you can see in the diagram, so it is like the amount of services you'll be using in the cloud, you will be paying for those services only. So let's see what is what does this definition say and uh, we'll dig deep, uh, dive into this particular service and try to understand how it helps organizations and the cloud service provider. So it says that the cloud systems automatically systems like servers and the storage we have automatically control and adjust resource usage by leveraging a metering capability at some level of abstraction, whatever the kind of mechanism which uh, cloud vendors are providing to the customers so that appropriate to the type of service being used like storage, processing, bandwidth or number of users which are being currently active right so 
they should be doing some kind of abstraction at uh, you know at their layers at the different uh, mechanisms they are having so that whatever type of services for number of hours being used by the customers like storage processing or a bandwidth they should be charged as per the hourly rate being defined by the by the cloud providers so in another sense it says that the resource usage can be monitored controlled reported and provide transparency for both the provider and the consumer of the utilized resources so let's say for example there is one server and uh, well, you can say and uh, on that particular server on a physical host there are 10 vms running so they should be doing some kind of abstraction at the host layer or that particular physical host so that if those if if there are 10 vms and there are three organizations which are using those vms so in that case they should be able to pull out the report that okay each organization has used these many number of vms for these many hours or these many computer sources for these hours and they should be charged accordingly and cloud providers should be should be providing a transparency in the report that okay this is the report this is uh, these are the resources they have used from this time to this time and they are billed according to that so company can purchase computing resources to match their fluctuating needs and will be charged for that particular usage only right so let's study with an example of uh, with the help of example let's say there is a company a company b and company c so each and every organization has a different need so company a they might say that okay 80 gb ram they have used for uh, last five hours similarly company b said that okay they have used 50 tb of storage in in three days in case of aws or azure in, in case of any cloud vendor or cloud platform they they have chosen right so similarly company c said that okay they have uh, used uh, 200 gps of bandwidth so you can see the different organizations they are having different needs so they should be charged accordingly to the services they have chosen should not be like company a has uh, used uh, 80 gb of ram and they are charged for the vcpu so similarly they have they are using 50 terabyte of storage they should not be charged for the 100 terabyte of storage so cloud providers should be providing transparency to the to the cloud customers that okay boss you have used these services or organization b you have used 50 terabyte of storage in three days so this is our per hourly rate you will be charged according to that only and one more thing you can uh, in transparency which is uh, you know which is which is a good feature again uh, if you'll think from the cloud uh, consumer perspective you are getting all these features wherein the kind of services and the amount of services have used you are paying for that only so it would be really beneficial for you to to pay only for what you have used means when there was a spike you have used uh, the resources for that particular time and you will be billed for that particular time only and when there was no a spike you come to the business as usual and again you'll be charged for your uh, normal infrastructure usage so it is very good feature which again think from the ISP uh, this NIST perspective which says that this is the fifth characteristics you look for when you want to choose the cloud service provider so this is the fifth essential characteristics which will again help the organization to reduce the cost if they have a uh, detailed metering capability right provided by the cloud service provider so in terms of cloud service provider how it is beneficial like we discussed about these customers so if you'll provide such a transparency to the users again they will be coming back uh, to you or a word of mouth would be there in the market and you'll be able to get uh, again increased number of customers or increased revenue for the cloud service providers so again uh, you know these uh, in terms of uh, measured service what i can say is all these resources which are which are pooled within the uh, within the cloud environment are monitored and reported to the consumers about their their usage that the consumption rates and the cost so just think from the perspective of if you have worked in it from let's say you know five six years you can you can see 
that uh, you know a measured service or a billing is required at a each and every departmental level that the uh, amount of IT or the IT equipments have been used so this was always a pain point for the organizations to charge uh, different business units that okay how much infra they have used how much IT services they have been used so getting that dollar value was very difficult is very difficult really today also in case of traditional environment but uh, as soon as the cloud adoption is coming into the picture so in that case it is very easy wherein you can charge the different business units and create the different accounts within the AWS and they'll be charged according to their services. In that case, uh, the life for the business management group has also become easy. So this is about major service, the last characteristics. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll see the light, try to see the live demo that, okay, uh, how we can correlate it to the uh, different, uh, you can say, a cloud vendor so i'll try to log into the amazon console and show you that okay uh, how these characteristics are present in the uh, present within the console or within the cloud vendor so this is friend uh, i hope you have really enjoyed this lecture thank you thank you for watching hello friends so welcome to this demo in this particular demo we'll see the measured service or how we can use this characteristics or how Azure is providing this characteristics and customers can take benefit. So remember in the theory lecture, just a recap, we have discussed that, okay, in case of measured service, I should be, I should be built only on the amount of services I am using and it should be pretty transparent. Like there would be number of organizations who would be using these services and like company A should be getting the bill for company A only, not for the B and you should get a detailed report only then you'll have more customers and or number of organizations will have a trust in the cloud service provider. So we'll see in the Azure portal how we can see the detailed report or how they provide the transparency. So if I log into the Azure portal and you can scroll it down, there is a tab called cost management and billing. So you can get a detailed report about the like you know where you have done the spending so let's say if i'll move on to cost management uh, or let's say cost analysis and we'll be able to see the detailed report like which all services we have used and when we have used and we'll be able to see it in a moment like you can see the service name location resource group so all these information you will be able to see so right now you are not able to see let me choose a different time frame Okay, so let's say choose it for this year and you'll be able to see the number of resources I have used because remember we discussed that okay, uh, it is like pay as you go, the type of or the number of resources you'll be using, you'll get billed according to that. As you can see the accumulated cost, storage, uh, the amount I have spent and then uh, the application gateway, virtual network, uh, security center, virtual machines. And similarly, like different locations I have used, US East and US East 2. And you know that you'll get a detailed report like when which all locations which I have used and the resource groups, SA-RG and then Sentinel and uh, Microsoft Security, Demo-RG, Test-RG. So for the different resource groups, locations, they provide a detailed report. You can set the budgets, export the reports and depending on your subscriptions as well if you, within the enterprise organizations you might be having different subscriptions provided to the different functions or business owners you can get a detailed billing according to the different subscriptions you are having so this is it friends uh, in this lecture now hope you have the clarity on to the fifth characteristics which is measured service so thank you friends uh, thank you for watching this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hello friends uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, infrastructure as a service it is one of the service model uh, which is IIS and we call it as a infrastructure as a service so we'll uh, study uh, all the three service models one by one so let's start first with the infrastructure as a service so what exactly IIS is uh, first we need to understand that 
and uh, then we'll proceed further so guys uh, you know till this point of study uh, time we have studied that okay what is cloud computing and what are the five essential characteristics of cloud computing so in the definition itself uh, nist has said that okay there are three service models uh, one is infrastructure as a service and then platform as a service and then uh, software as a service to understand the infrastructure as a service because in in cloud uh, we are getting some kind of services from the cloud service provider so first in all the three models we'll be comparing it with the uh, on premise uh, data center let's say if if you will be managing all these things in your data center then what kind of services you will be managing in case of if you are using infrastructure as a service so it is very very important guys to understand uh, if, whether you want to run your infra in case of aws azure or google cloud and in really to uh, dig into the technical discussions or uh, or to save money while uh, deploying any kind of service if you have a better idea that okay what exactly each service is you'll be able to save money and uh, uh, run infra in a very good condition so let's say if uh, if it is on premise uh, you are maintaining a data center then uh, you know, then what you are doing then you are managing all the things you are having a space networking storage you are purchasing those servers then uh, installing uh, your vms os middleware databases and then data and uh, then uh, deploying the applications really to run your business now just having this picture into mind so how does uh, you know what services we are getting in case of if we are getting an infrastructure as a service so in case of infrastructure as a service all these layers still virtualization uh, from networking to virtualization are managed by the vendor when we say vendor means cloud service provider it could be aws it could be um, google or azure any it, uh, any cloud vendor if you are taking infrastructure as a service till virtualization they'll be managing you need not to take care of any networking and the how they are managing the storage their cooling and whatever the you know physical security all those things you are not taking care of that so what you will be taking care of is uh, so in this case uh, you will be taking care of all the layers above the uh, you can say the uh, this os middleware runtime data application so from os to applications you will be managing and all the below layers will be managed by the vendors so guys it is very crucial to understand let's say if you are performing any kind of assessment like pci dss or you know some gxp assessment in that case you really need to understand that okay till what layer you are having a control so that you can make the assessment uh, accordingly and the same type of report can be shared with your customers so uh, so this is the comparison if you'll say uh, that uh, actually the part which earlier was being managed by you now you are only uh, responsible for managing the uh, layer which is above the os so guys if i'll ask the question let's say that uh, if you are using infrastructure as a service so and one more thing guys so infrastructure service uh, you know you can take it from amazon you can take it from uh, uh, Google Cloud or from Azure. Some people say that Amazon is an IaaS or uh, Azure is an PaaS. So that is a wrong statement. If you are getting all the services, let's say you know all these services are being managed by any cloud vendor, and you are taking care of all these services above OS, then it is an infrastructure as a service. So it is not like one cloud vendor is a PaaS or IaaS. It might be good in providing services uh, like platform as a services, right? But it is not like they are only totally. Uh, pass so uh, currently both type of services are being provided by the aws as well as azure so let's say if uh, you know there is a you know the question that okay who will be managing the security patching uh, for the os so if it is an infrastructure as a service you means as a customer or as an organization you will be managing the security or installing the patches onto the instance so it is totally your uh, you know your ball of game so you know how customers access the IAS infrastructure as a service uh, you know through the internet and uh, they can access the cloud portal like you have seen in the previous demo just log into the console and we have provisioned the VM we have chosen the IAS and then all those settings we have uh, provided the storage space and a virtual hard disk and our server was ready 
So let's say for example that uh, you know user can log into the AWS console or Azure console and it can you know choose the virtual machine and then uh, install that particular uh, OS, deploy the uh, you know database and create the storage buckets that can be used for backup or uh, whatever kind of workload uh, you want to have in your uh, cloud infrastructure, right? So for IaaS customers, uh, so they can uh, you know provide us uh, provide the services with the help of which you can actually monitor the type of uh, you know load you are having and the cost associated with it. You can monitor the performance and uh, you know balance the network traffic. Uh, you can have your own disaster recovery site uh, configured. So all these things are uh, you know you can do if you are having the infrastructure as a service. So again, uh, try to have this diagram in, uh, in in your mind. In that case, uh, you know, you'll have a solid understanding of all the three service models. Because in each and every model, it is the difference of responsibilities only. So as you move forward from infrastructure to PaaS to SaaS, your responsibility is, is getting decreased and the responsibility of cloud vendor is getting increased. So what are the benefits of IS? No capex or very uh, no or very less capex involved means you are not doing any kind of uh, you know uh, investment uh, before uh, beforehand while provisioning your service or running your business. You are just going onto the AWS console or cloud providers website and you are just provisioning the uh, services whenever it is required. So another example just quickly deploy your infra and you will be paying only for what you will be using if you have used the servers let's say for five hours or storage for five hours you'll be paying for that only you're not paying any kind of upfront cost so another case like i said the cloud provider is responsible for maintaining the maintenance of all the hardware and virtualized services means all the layers which are which were below the os cloud provider will be maintaining that so you will be as an organization they are saving a huge amount of money because uh, in most of the organization if you're having a data center then you're paying uh, a space uh, depending on where your office is then you know you are having those uh, you know power and generators you require then cooling equipments then you know maintenance of the data centers then you need engineers then uh, you know another layer is uh, this uh, security of the data center you need guards you need 24 by 7 monitoring of cctv just imagine how much cost organizations are saving so what IaaS includes your uh, the ip addresses network connections uh, firewalls bandwidth and all your load balances they are under the IS. so this was the first service model uh, which is infrastructure as a service uh, so this is it uh, in this lecture friends uh, we'll meet you in the next lecture Thank you. Thank you for watching. Hello friends. Welcome to this lecture on uh, PaaS, which is platform as a service. So in the last lecture, we studied the service model infrastructure as a service. So this is the second service model, which is platform as a service. So what actually uh, platform as a service is from if you'll just uh, try to, you know, uh, rephrase the name or repeat the name, it is platform as a service. So, you know, this simply you can refer it as a, a a kind of a category of cloud computing wherein uh, you know it provides a platform and you can say that environment which uh, for the developers to build applications and and services over the internet in simple terms which uh, wherein a platform is being provided to the developer so that they can develop the applications over the internet without having your without having you to build your infra and then uh, deploy the application so that you can run your application so like we did in the last infrastructure as a service model so we'll try to compare that okay if it is on premise then what services you will be having in ca that case so like in case of uh, in your on premise data center you will be managing all the layers from networking to application but now let's say if it is platform as a service so you can see two colors uh, the one which is in uh, yellow color that is being managed by the vendor so if you remember in case of uh, infrastructure as a service till this virtualization layer everything was being managed by the vendor so as you know you move to a second service model which is platform as a service so in that case you know till runtime middleware and all those things are being managed by the vendor only right so you need not to take care of the os patches over here right so suppose if you log into the aws console you want to run a database like you want to have a mariadb mysql 
So in that case, you'll be able to get a username and the password uh, when you provision a database. So whatever kind of operating system they have used, uh, let's say Amazon or Azure while you have deployed the infrastructure or uh, you know database, uh, in that case, uh, you are not taking any pain of those installing the OS or the upgrades. So what you are getting is you are getting a database and uh, you can then uh, get that particular link so that you get that link can be given to the application guys to make connectivity with the database. So in this case, uh, you know, what you are getting is you are getting kind of a tools with the help of which you'll be able to deploy your applications. So this is the uh, you know platform as a service wherein past services are hosted in the cloud and users uh, again simply accessing the services through the they can access the service through various APIs but uh, hello, let's keep it simple that you can access those services with the help of a browser only. So like I said the platform as a service is a model in which third party provider like AWS Azure they delivers the hardware and software tools usually which are required for the application development and so that users can use over the so that users who are actually developing those applications they can deploy those applications and use those services to develop those applications over the internet so a kind of a platform is given right which is who has given the platform service provider has given the platform wherein it is giving you the hardware and software tools to deploy the application so it is a platform in that case it was infra was given to os was given to you above layers were given to you so that you can create your own platform and uh, run your own os so in that case you were having infrastructure as a service you were having more control here you are having lesser control and lesser manageability so it totally depends on your requirement that if you need a more control so then you can go for the infrastructure as a service and if you need a less control and uh, you know there is no such compliance requirement then you can go ahead and choose platform as a service so just an example like user can log into the platform uh, to deploy application using uh, various devops tools and uh, you know infra servers provided by the cloud providers so what are the benefits of a platform as a service you know no or very less capex involved right so i would say a uh, you know, sorry for the typo so it is like uh, no no capex involved uh, i would say so another is you can quickly deploy applications uh, by by the various kind of tools which are being provided by the service provider and you'll be paying only for what you'll be using like we have in the infrastructure as a service as well so the another thing is like uh, it provides a very robust platform wherein the users uh, you know, they are given platform where they can test, build, and do app, deploy various applications with ease. So earlier, just think for an example, if you need to test and deploy applications, some of the applications may need scalability or you know other things uh, for some testing. So in that case, you know the kind of platform uh, cloud providers are uh, giving and the various tools they are providing with the help of which they can deploy the application and you know the kind of integration is there into the cloud it is very helpful for the developers and uh, the cloud is becoming their favorite thing or a platform as a service because they can quickly deploy application they have the tools which they need and the kind of infra which is required to test and deploy the application so there are various uh, you know examples like uh, salesforce has a uh, you know hero aws elastic beanstalk is a example of a platform as a service and you know it has a uh, better FTT time uh, wherein you can deploy applications quickly and uh, really to save time and run your business and just guys like benefits it is uh, just think from a perspective that okay why platform as a service is important because pass is designed for companies or for users who have either an application or a set of application and wants to deploy those applications over the cloud so in this situation, uh, what you say that pass provider with a computer programming capability is, is the best solution, right? So just think from that perspective that, okay, what kind of, uh, you know, tools are being required by the developers and uh, really to deploy the applications uh, with ease and with, with less expenditure. So this is the second uh, service model we have gone through, which is platform as a service. 
so thank you friends thank you for watching this lecture hope you have enjoyed this lecture we'll meet you in the next lecture thank you hello friends welcome to this lecture on uh, software as a service which is the third service model so we have covered two service models till now one is infrastructure as a service uh, the other one was platform as a service and this is software as a service so we'll see how it is different and what are the responsibilities in case you will be choosing this service uh, from a cloud provider so we'll do in the same way like in case of on premise you will be managing all the layers from networking to application but in case of uh, software as a service all the layers will be managed by the uh, cloud provider or the vendor only so if you remember infrastructure as a service when we if you'll take that service till virtualization uh, means from networking to virtualization will be managed by the cloud uh, service provider right and above layers were being managed by the by you only right similarly in case of if you choose platform as a service till runtime will be managed by the vendor and the data and application will be managed by the uh, organization or you only right so but in case of uh, uh, software as a service all the layers from the application to the networking being managed by the vendor so from a responsibility perspective here more responsibilities lies with the vendor only but again uh, like i said it it totally depends on the control let's say if in a, your organization there is some compliance requirement that you need to have control you need to manage the os you need to manage the hardening of the os and the security at the database and then you go ahead and choose the service model as per your requirement but if you want to run uh, you know uh, applications uh, which are provided by the cloud provider right if you want to use those applications like dropbox to you know store the data and all those things right to microsoft onedrive so in that case uh, you need not to take care about the infra so that is uh, as per the agreement or the contractual agreement you are having contractual uh, agreement you are having with the vendor or the csp you can use those services and the security and everything manageability is being provided by the vendor so a lot of responsibilities some organizations might be happy that okay they need to take care of all those things right but for some organizations there may be a concern about security and all those things so in that case it is totally on you that okay if you want more control and security then choose your service model accordingly right but uh, you know if you want to save money and use the cloud applications in that case you go ahead and choose the software as a service like my hr dropbox and all those things uh, which are available in the market so software as a service is like again a cloud model in which third party provider host application and makes them available to the customer customers over the internet like i said dropbox we all have worked where you can just log in and uh, put your data over there so what kind of permissions or manageability you'll be getting that okay you'll be able to manage your data you can add permissions add users all those things but you are not taking care of any of the infrastructure you are not uh, configuring the storage or the database whatever is required to 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 run the application so all these things are taken care by the software as a service so we'll have a very good example with the pizza as a service we'll uh, try to understand the all the three service models uh, platform as a service infrastructure as a service and software as a service so again uh, in simple terms software as a service is a process for providing software to the users over the internet like project management software content management software is there email software like office 365 we have right contact management and uh, there are different softwares available so this is about the software as a service let's try to compare all the three service models and see that okay how the responsibilities differ in case of uh, uh, three service models because we have gone through all the service models now so on premise we know that okay all will be managed by us in case of infrastructure service like i said till virtualization you will be managing and above all will be managed by the you and below all the layers will be managed by the vendor only so in case of platform as a service uh, till runtime is being managed by the vendor and this uh, till data and application is managed by the uh, by the you or the organization so in case of software as a service all the layers are being managed by by the vendor so hope guys it is clear now because as you are moving from on premise to the infrastructure to the platform to the data so you can you know 
uh, observe one thing that the control which you were having in case of uh, when you were having your own data center the control you were having is, is much more in case of on-premise so as soon as you are moving from infrastructure to the software you are getting basically lesser control but more manageability will be provided by the vendor only so you need not to take care about the patching updates of the systems and doing the application upgrades all those things so all those things will be managed by the vendor only in case of application uh, in case of software as a service in case of platform as a service application level you will be managing but OS responsibility let's say if OS is doing uh, end of life cycle their uh, patches needs to be upgraded their vulnerability scans there are a number of things involved right so in that case you are not uh, that is not your headache so all those things will be taken care by the vendor only so it is a platform as a service but uh, let's say in case of uh, infrastructure service like providing the physical security CCTV cameras data centers uh, you know buying a space and then uh, providing cooling equipments powers uh, redundant power supply redundant bandwidth right uh, that uh, link from the ISPs so all these things you are not worried about you you are getting uh, this uh, virtual environment over there so you can choose the OS you want to install and uh, run your operating system in that case so pretty much more uh, more control as compared to platform as a service model but again uh, it is like uh, both ways a yeah. so couple of things vendor will be managing couple of things you will be managing so my favorite example uh, just compare it with a pizza as a service so let's say if you are making a pizza at a home so all these things like cheese toppings tomato sauce pizza dough fire everything will be managed by you only but uh, you know infrastructure as a service compared with take and bake right so pizza dough everything uh, you know uh, vendor is managing and uh, what you will be managing is like uh, you know fire oven electrical gas soda and dining table so let's say if, if pizza is delivered to you so all these things still here will be managed by the by the vendor only by the pizza hut or whoever the pizza vendor is there and uh, you know in order to enjoy that pizza you need a dining table and a soda and definitely you will be eating that pizza and uh, software as a service so it is like uh, dined out wherein uh, you know all these things which are in yellow will be taken care by the vendor only so you can just sit and enjoy your pizza so you know just try to compare it with the on-premise infrastructure service platform as a service and a software as a service so in this way i hope it is uh, you know now pretty clear with you in case you are having uh, doubts you can write to me uh, you know in the lectures uh, we can have we can solve those queries in case still you are having doubt so so now we know that okay what are uh, what responsibilities uh, lies with the service provider and what responsibilities lies with the customer in case of all the uh, service model so now let's see what are the benefits of service uh, software service so dedicated support on the backend you can easily keep using the application um, you know as you are paying for that as soon as it means uh, as, lo as long as you are paying for the service you can keep on using that so no requirement to buy and maintain asset in terms of network or hardware one can focus on the valuable activities which are uh, you know aligned with your business activities um, because you are not because the thing is uh, the more money or the more effort earlier organizations used to put in uh, in managing the backend infra so in case of software as a service all these things are managed by the vendor now so you can uh, spend money on to the innovation and all the other things the, what are the new services the new technologies which are coming into the market so all these things uh, now the organizations are trying to do and invest the money in the R&D so that is the totally intent over here and uh, the other thing is data is being replicated on the backup uh, servers and all those things are taken care by the vendor only so there is no risk of uh, you know losing the data so these are the benefits about the software as a service so in this lecture we have studied uh, you know what are what is software as a service then uh, the comparison with the with the platform as a service software as a service and then example of a pizza as a service uh, you know when we have seen the comparison with the infrastructure service platform as a service and software service so hope you have really enjoyed this lecture friends uh, thank you thank you for watching meet you in the next lecture hello friends welcome to this lecture on uh, public cloud wherein uh, we'll study that okay what actually public cloud is because 
here in uh, you know in these subsequent lecture we'll study the different deployment models we have like public cloud private cloud or a hybrid cloud so we'll start with the public cloud first and try to understand that okay what public cloud is and what are the different benefits so what is public cloud like um, you know we we have the aws or azure so they are a kind of uh, public cloud wherein uh, they are providing all those five essential characteristics which are being provided by the uh, nist so you know they are uh, offering those services so in that case if you are purely uh, you know using the infra like uh, deploying the servers onto the uh, by using the cloud providers like AWS or Amazon then uh, it is a kind of a uh, public cloud so we'll see one by one so in case of public cloud the resources like storage uh, and servers are owned and operated by the third party only cloud service provider and delivered over the internet like we have seen all those services like virtualization and everything is being provided by the cloud vendor only so what you will be doing you are installing your OS and all those things uh, but the base infra would be provided by the cloud vendor only like microsoft azure and uh, this amazon web service is an example of public cloud so with the public cloud all the hardware software and other supporting infrastructure is owned and managed by the cloud provider only so try to pay attention to the uh, things which we have marked in red so like you know servers and storage are owned and operated by the third party who is third party like aws or azure because you are not managing all these things are managed by the uh, cloud vendor only so that is why we are calling it as a public cloud so we know the definition of a cloud right so public cloud is when somebody or third party is taking care of uh, or providing the infrastructure to you and you are just uh, using that infra to deploy your application or run the business but whole responsibility and uh, well in in providing that infra and managing that infra would be with the uh, with the vendor only so there is uh, if, if that is the deployment model the way you have deployed your services then you are using a public cloud so in public cloud the one thing uh, you know which is uh, there is that uh, they provide a multi-tenant environment so multi-tenant environment like i discussed in my earlier lectures as well so let's say if there is a server and uh, is uh, it's having a huge uh, you know uh, this compute and a storage space so in that case that box they can use it and they get, that box can be used wherein uh, they have deployed 100 vms onto that and those 100 vms might be used by the 20 organizations so in that case uh, you know it is a kind of uh, multi-tenant base means they are able to support multi-tenant the infrastructure which you are using are being shared with the other vendors as well so if you are an organization where uh, you think that okay there might be a compromise of the financial data or you are dealing with the very sensitive information uh, right some uh, some government u.s government agencies and all those things where uh, you want that okay the information should not be leaked then uh, all these industries they think that okay public cloud uh, uh, deployment model is not safe at all because if you are using a multi-tenant environment in that case there could be a risk of losing the information uh, even though the cloud providers are providing enough security but again it, it, it is totally an organization's call uh, to 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 take that okay depending on the infra and the data you are having so in that case uh, you'll be choosing that particular kind of uh, deployment model and just to add that if, if organizations uh, which are dealing with the sensitive data so cloud providers do have the dedicated hardware uh, services like dedicated hardware when uh, that particular server uh, along with the physical uh, you know server will be given it to you only so it will not be shared it with anyone so if uh, you are having a requirement wherein uh, there is a compliance requirement that says that oh you need a dedicated uh, storage or a dedicated server so the cloud providers do have that kind of option as well just to add so what are the benefits of public cloud uh, so lower cost no need to purchase hardware or software you pay only for the services which you will be using no maintenance because all those things will be taken care by the service provider only and service provider provides the maintenance for all those servers and uh, whatever the infra they are having so you are just deploying your infra over there and you will be running your application 
near unlimited scalability on demand resources are available to meet your business uh, business needs means uh, you can scale up and scale down as per your availability you can use the features like load balancing and all those things uh, wherein auto scaling features wherein you can deploy the infra as per your need and when there is no requirement you can downgrade the infra and you will not be charged for that and higher liability is there because uh, we have seen uh, you know and the live demo as well that okay cloud providers uh, are providing all those infra and they are having a huge infra like they are having uh, like in case of aws they are having around 20 regions all over the world and around 60 availability zones wherein each availability zone they have one to six data center so you know they they have the uh, environment uh, in in such a way that they are providing the higher liability and all those things so that you should not be losing your business so these are the benefits of uh, of using a public cloud as a deployment model so again like said as an organization as a user you need to understand first that okay what are the requirements is your data sensitive is it like what control what kind of control you would like to have on your data and what are your security requirements what are the compliance requirements what are the regulatory requirements so once all these requirements are into place then you go ahead and discuss with these stakeholders and then you can uh, take the decision that okay whether i should go ahead and choose the public cloud or a private cloud or uh, or a hybrid cloud so we'll we'll study uh, dig deep uh, into the other uh, deployment models as well but for public cloud it is like if uh, you know i have a trust onto the cloud vendor my data is uh, not so sensitive and uh, my organization or management agrees on to that uh, in that case i can go ahead and uh, use the public cloud option right so this is it my dear friends uh, hope you have uh, enjoyed the lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hello friends in this lecture we'll study what is private cloud in the last lecture we studied that okay what is uh, private uh, in the last lecture we studied uh, public cloud in this lecture we'll study what is private cloud again uh, second uh, deployment model which we can choose so what is private cloud uh, so private cloud consists of uh, computing resources uh, which uh, are exclusively or used by one business or an organization only like in case of public cloud we have seen that you know there is a multi-tenant environment and uh, a number of customers are you sharing the infra with each other so it, it was kind of a multi-tenant environment when number of uh, like uh, the example i shared that uh, on a one physical box there might be 100 vms and those 100 vms could be used by the 20 organizations but in case of uh, private cloud all those computing resources would be exclusively used by a particular organization only because it is totally private to you it was publicly available right even though you can uh, you know create your own virtual private clouds with vpcs and vnets like within those but you know uh, that is again a public where you are using those uh, you know shared infra in case of which is provided by the cloud provider so in this particular uh, deployment model uh, in case of private cloud uh, can be physically located either at your uh, you know on-site data center or it can be hosted by a third party service provider but again even if it is hosted by a third party service provider all the things are particularly dedicated to you only because you are having the control of uh, uh, this uh, whole data in case of private cloud the services and the infrastructure is always maintained on a private network and the hardware and the software are dedicatedly solely to your organization only so like i said uh, it totally depends on the compliance requirement or the uh, you know regulatory requirements or uh, in the way your organization is running business right maybe it is uh, compliant under pci dss or gxp or hipaa so depends on that uh, if, if you you know really like finance organizations or uh, the organizations like government organizations wherein they deal with the nuclear studies and all those things so you don't want that okay you know th this kind of information should be leaked or uh, you know the money is not an factor so uh, you know you are ready to spend the amount which is required in case of uh, you know building your own infra and then you will be storing that particular sensitive information onto your infra because money is not a concern the concern is that the only the data should not be leaked so if if such is the scenario where importance is more related to the sensitive data or to the security or to the ownership of the data so in that case organizations prefer to have a 
private cloud rather than a public cloud so it, it totally depends on your organization the business and uh, the data you deal with uh, so on the basis of that organizations take decision that okay what kind of deployment model uh, they will be using to deploy the services and run the business so private clouds are often used by like i said government agencies financial institutes or any mid to large organizations wherein business critical options uh, you know they are seeking and they need a enhanced control over their environment so that because organizations so there are certain organizations like which which in which they need uh, you know really the control onto the data they need control on each and every layer so in that case it is only possible if you uh, own that infra if you own uh, you know everything so that you can put controls according to you in that case you have a surety inside that okay my data is not going anywhere my data is within my data center and i'm taking care of that so if that is the scenario just go ahead and use the private cloud and again money is not a concern because uh, you know again uh, you are working all those things like uh, maybe you are creating on demand access all those things if you are having a feature uh, you know all these features within the you can have a perfect cloud like pub, uh, this uh, public cloud provides the service and in the same way you can provide all those services uh, internally to your customers so what are the benefits of uh, private cloud so more flexibility in terms like organization can customize its cloud environment to meet the its specific needs uh, improved security like i said because you are having more control you can add controls as per your requirements uh, so resources are not shared with anyone you are not using any kind of multi tenant environment so higher level of control and security is possible high scalability in terms like private clouds uh, you know still affords the scalability and efficiency of the public cloud so if you have customized your uh, cloud in such a way and you have the skill set and uh, money to spend on so you can uh, reap the benefits of high scalability so this is it my dear friends uh, when we have studied about uh, uh, this uh, second deployment model which is uh, private cloud so a, a very short lecture hope you have enjoyed this lecture thank you thank you for watching we'll meet you in the next hello friends in this lecture we'll study what is hybrid cloud so in previous two lectures we studied uh, what is public cloud then what is private cloud so this is the third deployment model which is the hybrid cloud so hybrid as you can see a name itself suggests that the uh, you can see a mix of two so it is a mix of both public as well as uh, private cloud so you are reaping the benefits of a public cloud as well as you are enjoying the security of a private cloud so let's see what uh, hybrid cloud is so it is often called as the best of uh, you know both worlds hybrid cloud combine on premise infrastructure or uh, you can as uh, private cloud with uh, with public cloud so organizations can reap the advantages of both so it is like you know end users are using the private cloud but at times when it is required you can use the public cloud as well so this is the most uh, you can say used uh, deployment model which is being uh, currently used by the organization so because uh, most of the organizations they they are currently having their data center so they are not that the you know the major reason that okay this is being uh, the the model which is currently being used and preferred the one thing is that all the organization they do they don't want to take the risk for moving the all the infra in one go to the to the public cloud so they are slowly testing and moving their infra to the public cloud and the other is the and the other reason which organization is having they want uh, to have the sensitive data or data on which they need more control they wanted to have in on premise or in private cloud but the data like web application wherein uh, you know they need less control or less security and uh, you know where they can reap the benefit of public cloud they have moved that particular uh, workload to the public cloud environment so in that way they are using both uh, infra uh, of the private as well as public cloud so in hybrid cloud data and applications can move between the private and public cloud for a greater flexibility so i'll explain in a moment uh, the concept so the another thing is one can use the public cloud for high volume uh, lower security needs such as web based email and the private cloud for on premise for sensitive and business critical like financial reporting so like i said 
public cloud you can use wherein a lower security is required and you need a uh, you know high volume of data and uh, wherein the traffic is huge and you want to reap the benefit of uh, public cloud infra you can go ahead and use the public cloud now where you you think that okay this data is very much sensitive and if you deploy this particular or migrate this data to the public cloud there could be issues so you can use your private cloud and put your sensitive data within your organization or private cloud only so that it is within your control and the other is like in hybrid cloud uh, you can also search for this word what is cloud bursting is an uh, you know is a very good option and organizations are reaping benefit of this i'll tell you what cloud bursting is so let's say you know you are running couple of uh, this uh, end users are accessing some of the websites and during the normal business hours uh, whatever replication servers or the infra you are having they are able to handle that particular load but there might be a possibility that okay after two days or three days uh, a big billion sale is coming like i gave the example of flipkart or a new year sale is coming right so in that case you have, or you have announced some uh, you know days of sale that okay from for particular next uh, one week there could be uh, you know sales on multiple products so in that case you are expecting that a huge traffic would be coming and uh, you want to uh, you know use the benefit of public clouds so in that case you can uh, you can quickly deploy those particular uh, servers within the cloud so that uh, you know whatever the load is being uh, coming onto your servers uh, that peak can be handled by the uh, handled by the public cloud so in that case that is called as uh, cloud burst whenever there is a spike in the in the usage or in the activity so in that case uh, rather than uh, procuring your own infra you can use the infra provided by the public cloud and uh, you'll pay for those uh, uh, pay the charges only for that time and after that when it, the requirement is there uh, not there you can uh, shut down those instances and you'll not be charged for that so in this way uh, you know hybrid cloud has a number of benefits so let's see a couple of benefits of uh, hybrid cloud your organization can maintain uh, you know control over the private infrastructure for sensitive assets there is more flexibility like you can take advantage of the additional resources in the cloud whenever there is a spike or a need cost effectiveness like uh, you know with the ability to scale to the public cloud uh, you need not to pay for the uh, you're not paying anything for the uh, you know upfront cost uh, you're only paying for the time you have used some extra capacity extra storage onto the cloud and there is a ease like transition to the cloud uh, you know because you can migrate gradually and uh, you know within different uh, in different uh, phases like once you are satisfied with the, this particular project and that is running successfully onto the cloud then you can go ahead and plan your second project and uh, like uh, your second data center third data center so there is a ease in that that uh, you know once your organization or the stakeholders are fully satisfied uh, gradually you can move your infra to the to the uh, to the public cloud so these are the benefits uh, of uh, hybrid cloud so uh, my dear friends like uh, in, the, in the very first lecture when we study uh, what is cloud computing we had a long definition from the nist and at the point i've said that okay this definition might be uh, looking very lengthy and uh, you know nst uh, this national institutes of standard and technology had uh, you know spent a lot of time in standardizing the definition so you know once we complete all the lectures like five attributes or five essential characteristics and three service models and three deployment models will again come to this definition and we'll see that okay if it is simple right and uh, if it is worth spending time so you know as per my knowledge there not there could not be any best definition than this of uh, cloud computing so now you can see just pay attention to the colors which are uh, red so what is cloud computing now so cloud computing is a model uh, for enabling ubiquitous means everywhere right so like broad network access uh, convenient on demand network access like the first characteristics and ubiquitous is present everywhere the second characteristics we studied to a network access to a shared pool of configurable resources where we said that a pool of resources should be available in terms of network servers and storage that can be rapidly provisioned and released with the minimal management effort of the service provider interaction so this is another characteristics and this model is composed of five essential characteristics which are given above three service model ias pass and sas 
and three deployment models that we have just finished like uh, public cloud private and hybrid cloud so if you will see it is just the combination of those five essential characteristics and then your deployment and the service models so as per me there could not be any best definition nist has done a wonderful work in defining and explaining cloud computing so i hope uh, this definition would be would be simple now so this is it uh, my dear friends i hope you have really enjoyed this course uh, wherein uh, you know we have uh, studied each and every topic in detail and i have also included a couple of demos so that uh, you can correlate uh, in a live environment that okay how cloud providers are providing such a big infra and then uh, you know what is they are having within their data centers how many data centers and uh, how they are connected worldwide so that you can understand that okay it is really very difficult at the vendors uh, or the providers side itself that to provide such a big infra how much money and uh, you know the effort is required at their end so thank you friends thank you for spending your time in case you are having any doubts uh, you can write it to me you can uh, you know We'll try to solve your query as soon as possible. Thank you, friends. Thank you.